How much we really need, all of us need to create excitement wherever we go. We love you, We'll just pretend about Fine. it. This is the <laughs> boom ray. Mm -hmm. yes. We can't see you back here. What? We can't see you. We can't see you. Oh, we can't see you. Too short. Yeah. Yeah. No, we can't see you. Too short. Worth it, isn't it? You look the same. Haven't changed since a while ago. Thank you, girls. Yes, sir. Where has everybody been this morning? This is the only group that's come. They don't love you as much as we do. They don't love you as much as we do. We're the only ones that have boyfriends now. Yeah. Well, because you know, you're the best one taken, and so they had to go get the second best. Right. Don't make them like this. Fortunately. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye. I love you. Now that's not double honor, okay? That is plain down sexual idolatry, is what that is. I mean, a preacher, some young girl come up to him and say, you know, I love you, preacher. I love you. No one loves you as much as I do. He should say, young lady, that's inappropriate talking to me that way. But not Jack Hiles. I'm sure he never acted on any of that, though. I'm sure he never was with, fornicated with any of those young women. I'm sure he did these above reproach. Let's continue. 30. Recently, uh, Clay Strobel and I were out soloing this week, and uh, we drove by Catholic school. And I said to Clay, I said, what's to stop us from walking over there and, and witnessing to those kids on the playground? And there was none standing there. And, and he said, well, let's do it. And so we prayed and we said, dear God, please open a door for us to witness to these people. And we walked up and we asked the nun if we could speak to these kids. And she said, no, I don't think that that'd be possible. And immediately a priest came from inside the building and he said, what are you doing here? And I greeted, greeted uh, and introduced ourselves to him. And, and uh, he was very abrupt and, and tried to intimidate us. And we just stayed there and, and told him why we were there. Just out wanted to talk to the kids about God. And uh, to make a long story short, we went inside with him and he introduced us to three other Jesuit priests. Uh, hello? <laughs> He went in and, us and, and showed us, introduced us to three other Jesuit priests. That means the first priest was also a Jesuit, from what they're saying. He went in and introduced us to three other Jesuit priests. So they identified themselves as Jesuits. Now, what would, what would good Bible-believing Christians do at that point in time? Listen to what he says. Pay very close attention to what this student, this great soul-winning student at Hiles Anderson College does. And this is, this is their video that they put out, The Church with a Heart. This is their video. Again, how did this make it through the editing process? Shouldn't some Bible believer out there have gone, whoa, wait a second here, what's going on? Listen to what this guy says. Check this out. And we got to talking with him, and I asked him about the work, and I said, it's amazing what's being done here. We got to talking with him, and, and I asked him about the work, and I said, it's amazing what's being done here. Here, here, where were they at? They were standing inside a Catholic church talking to four Jesuit priests. And he says, I asked him about the work and it's amazing what's being done here. Let's continue. And God somehow uh, broke their heart in some way. It was just like that they just melted and and they said, well, feel free to go see, look at the, uh, our facilities. And we walked into a class, and, and one of the teachers invited us in, and, and we started soul with right here in class. So before it was all said and done with, all of the kids in the class, uh, 21 of them were saved, and also the teacher. Isn't that a nice story? Isn't that wonderful? We talked to, you know, we were Bible-believing Baptists, and we went in and we talked to four Jesuit priests, and we told them that they have a good work here, and, and God melted the priest's heart. And, and they said, 
you're welcome here. Go on into our classrooms. And so we walked into the classroom and we converted all 21 students and the nun. Isn't that a wonderful story? Woo! Amen! Praise the Lord! But listen to what Jack Scott says. So you walk inside of a Catholic school. Yes, sir. And you walk inside of a classroom. Yes, sir. Where a nun was teaching, and the whole class of 21 got saved, and the nun got saved as well. Yes, sir. All right, bro. It's just like, oh, wonderful. You, you did all this stuff. That's great. That's wonderful. Um, let me just say it this way. For any of you out there that aren't living in insane Nuttyville like that over there, um, witnessing to Catholics is very difficult. Extremely difficult. Okay? How many of you out there have Catholic family members that think you're crazy, think you're nuts, and you can't get through? You can't, you can't get through their thick skulls for anything. I mean, come on. And, and these two Baptists walk in, talk to four Jesuit priests, Go past them, walk into a classroom. 21 Catholics get saved in a nun. I mean, come on. What in the world? What kind of students are these people raising out there? Unless they themselves uh, are Jesuits? Like, like the Jesuit priests are just kind of stupid. And, oh, we'll just let Bible believers walk around our school here and talk to our kids. Is there a Jesuit tie-in? Oh yeah, I believe that there is. I mean, wouldn't a, another Jesuit say to a Jesuit priest, you have a good work going here? How much you want to bet that student was a Jesuit? Of course not, that's conspiratorial, right? Let's continue. One somebody, a four week count. Everybody it's one somebody for the last four weeks, stand up. First Baptist Church has many soul winning clubs. One of these is the Foster Club. to stand up that got someone down the aisle during our contest, during our 10-week contest. Everybody stand up that got somebody. Norma, you're our 70? 75 in July. 75 in July? She's won 300 people to the Lord. That's fantastic. Uh, 75 people, 300 people to the Lord. What is this? Is this of the Lord? You know, I thought we weren't supposed to glory. We weren't supposed to bring glory on ourselves. You know, again, let me turn you to some to a, a verse of scripture here. You know, which they're not doing at the uh, Foster Club. There. I mean, just this stuff is just so amazing. Galatians chapter one, verse twenty-one through twenty-four. Afterwards I came into the regions of Syria and Cilicia, and was unknown by face unto the churches of Judea, which were in Christ. But they had heard only that he which persecuted us in times past now preacheth the faith which once he destroyed, and Paul stood up and received the glory. Oh, no, it doesn't say that. It says, and they glorified God in me. Why would Paul stay there and just sit back and just... While they're there talking about him and stuff. Why didn't he stand up and say, <coughs> I'm the guy you're talking about. I've led thousands to the Lord. Why? Because that's not what Christians do. This is a bunch of nonsense. You know what this is? This is quick prayerism. It's easy believism. Going out and telling people, pray a prayer, pray a prayer, pray a prayer. And we're going to see here in just a couple minutes, they actually give away a gold ring. If you do really, really good and you get thousands saved, you know, 
saved, they'll give you a gold ring. Let's listen to what this lady says. Well, I really didn't think I could ever be a soul winner. I just didn't uh, feel the confidence to go out and do it. But I watched my children because they had been in the ministries at First Baptist Church and Hiles Anderson College. They were all soul winners. So I thought, I have to learn how to do this. And finally I did and have been able to win 700 people to the Lord. How long have you been in Foster Club, Bessie? I started this fall. You started in the fall mm -hmm. and you've already won 50 people to the Lord. Yes. Betsy, would you be embarrassed 55. if I... You've won 55 to the uh -huh. Lord already. <laughs> Betsy, would you be embarrassed if I ask how old you are? No. How I'm, old are you? I'm in my 81st year. Have you won some of your own people now to oh, the Lord? Oh, yes. I've gone back to uh, New Mexico on two occasions, and I got to win 70 to the Lord out of 100... I've won 180, but 50, 70 of them are Navajo Indians. The Dunamis Club is a children's organization designed to entertain children whose parents are out soul winning. We have five classes having children from age four through the sixth grade that we do such things as crafts, cooking, ball games for the guys, field trips. We have somewhat under a hundred children every week and it's, it's designed so that the children will not be penalized because the parents are out soul winning. We, you don't have to penalize your children because you're out soul winning. Uh, here's a thought. Maybe take your children with you. Maybe don't put them in the care of other people. Let's continue. She's got a gold ring on because she's won uh, 2,500, but now it's 5,000 souls. So we're going to have to start putting diamonds in her ring or something. Cindy? <laughs> yeah, you get a gold ring when you lead 2,500 people to the Lord, but now she's up to 5,000. We're going to have to start putting diamonds in her ring. Satanic. This is completely satanic. I mean, just pride, arrogance. Look at this. Tell us about your soul winning. Okay, I started soul winning when I was 11 years old. I couldn't wait to get old enough to go to teenage soul winning. I used to sit home with my mom on Saturday nights and wait to go soul winning with the teenagers. When I was going into seventh grade, age 11, I was able to begin to soul win and go soul winning. Won my first soul at 11. Then by the, before I finished high school, I had reached 2,500 people to the Lord. And now through the preaching that we've heard week after week, I've been soul winning weekly all my life since 11 years old, never stopped, and excited to get to heaven because of it. Excited to get to heaven because of it. <laughs> well, if you do make it to heaven, I say it's a rather big if, you're going to find out that those people aren't there. Unless they, you know, got saved by truly coming to the Lord. Uh, let's continue. First Baptist Church is such a wonderful place. Every individual counts. From over 30 years ago, when I began playing the organ, I've realized that here, the individual is what really matters. But we weren't even running a thousand yet until all these thousands have come. It's been exciting to be a part of it. You know, she's the same one that said that she can't separate her pastor from her Lord. You know, and she's saying, oh, we weren't running a thousand yet. Uh, where's this terminology at in the scripture? We aren't running a thousand. We weren't running, we're, you know, we're running many thousands now. We're running, running. That's business talk, people. It's corporation talk. We're running, a, we're running this many people through here, running them through. Business. That's all this thing is. They have attacked us at our strongest point. And that is our belief in purity, our love for children, and our compassion. Our love for purity. Okay, Hiles, why don't we talk about your disgusting, filthy life, you pervert. And the perverted life of your son, whose younger sister, you know, David Hiles, and his younger sister, Linda, she goes, yeah, he had 13 affairs, you know, you know, committed fornication there, 13 affairs at one church, went to another one at 17 there. 30 affairs. Oh, we stand for purity. What a liar. I mean, I hope if you are watching this thing yet, and if you're still a follower of Jack Hiles, I, I hope that you've been convinced now the guy's a liar. Let's continue. 
There's not one single cult, as we call cults, thing in our independent fundamental Baptist churches. <laughs> yeah, there's not one cult thing there, you know, in our churches, you know. See how he lies? They say we have a big paddle that we use at the First Baptist Church of Hammond. <laughs> we have no paddles. Well, we have some ping pong paddles, but, but we don't use them for spanking anybody. We have no paddles. And we have no child abuse. And by the way, neither do you. And neither do our churches represented in this room. What about Joe Combs? There's no child abuse. There's, there's no child abuse. Criminal record after criminal record after criminal record. The man is a liar. Let's continue. We are not religious fanatics. We are historic Baptists. We oppose reclusive cultism. Uh, they're historic Baptists. No, they're not. No, they most certainly are not. And they, they do, you know, they are reclusive cultists. Our love for these mostly inner city people is evidenced by the expenditure of millions of dollars given annually to this endeavor without any financial return. Be it known by my signature that I endorse the bus ministry of our churches and devote myself to its perpetuation. <laughs> we put millions of dollars into it without any financial return. Oh, please. Give me a break. Guy left behind $70 million in real estate. No financial return. Poor guy. He just barely had enough to get by. $70,000 for a red carpet room, you know. Thank God I make an honest living. He said, thank God that he makes an honest living. I don't think so. And by the way, this is the uh, Bus Kids Conference in Chicago, 1993. Thank God I make an honest living. Yeah, right, Jack Hiles. I don't think so. That's been proven to be false. Continuing. Though fundamentalism is often tagged as being a mean religion, we're not mean people. There's nobody who loves like the fundamentalist who understands the Bible. We must continue to be people of restraint. We do not beat children. We do not advocate beating children. We tell our workers not to even touch a child. We don't reach out and touch children. I wish that the news media would investigate, compare the fundamental churches. We invite you to do that. And then go investigate the public school system in each city that you investigate the church. You know, they're just openly denying. We don't, we don't beat children. No, you know, you're sure, you know, a bunch of guys are in prison. Wait, that's not us. We don't beat children. <sighs> Continuing. And that statement about being a historic Baptist is very crucial because we have not varied one iota from our forefathers who were historic Baptists. By the way, those who are part of conventions and denominations, any Baptist who's a historic Baptist is an independent Baptist, even if he chooses to associate with a convention. It just so happens that we have gone back to the original formation of an independent Baptist church and have chosen not to be a part of a convention or a denomination. By the way, Dr. Denny Corll told us there are 18 to 20,000 of us independent Baptists in this nation. The fastest growing churches in America are independent Baptist churches. The colleges that are producing more graduates and starting more churches are independent Baptist colleges. And somebody say amen. The guy just lied. Totally lied. We haven't varied one iota from historic Baptists. They're not even, they don't even resemble historic Baptists. Okay? Study the old Baptists, Roger Williams, uh, John Smythe. Study these guys. 
You know, they didn't, they weren't doing anything even close to what these liars are. We haven't varied one iota. Ah, just a, so disgusting. And then he says, somebody say amen. You know, yeah, sure. Continuing. We're just about through. Oh, that's great singing. Now on this last stanza, watch me very carefully. I do some crazy things sometimes with songs. You, uh, you don't have to be crazy to be a song leader, but it helps so much. So you watch carefully so we all do the same crazy things together, all right? Stanza three, perfect submission, all is at rest, sing it now. Okay, pause it for a minute. Now we're at the Friday Memorial for Jerk Hiles here. And uh, notice the, the, you know, what is the purpose of singing a hymn among the saints? To give glory to the Lord. Now is this hymn here, is this hymn singing, is this giving glory to God or the song leader? Watch this. Perfect submission. fine singing yeah it's fine singing if you're into worshiping people you know a bunch of nonsense but let's continue I'm sure somebody probably would say brother Evans you shouldn't lead singing that way at a at a funeral well you folks you got to understand the boss is still watching me so I've got to do it the way he likes it done I got to do it the way the boss likes it done because the boss is still watching me. He said, Ryan, they're talking about the Lord. Let's watch. The church staff would also like to thank you not only for coming tonight, but also for loving our boss through the years. And in many cases, even taking care of our boss when he was at your church. There are pastors here tonight that often had him speak in your pulpit. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, who's their boss? Here, not there. Oh, they're not a cult, though. They're, they, they weren't a cult. Let's continue. Watch, watch some of this. Satanic idolatry here, comparing Jack Hiles to God himself. Watch. So we especially want to thank you for loving our boss. So I want to thank you for your love and in many cases your loyalty to our boss. You see, to us, the staff here at the church, Brother Hiles was much more than just a boss. He was somehow also a co-laborer. We rarely ever felt like we worked for Brother Hiles. We felt like we worked with Brother Hiles. Somehow he could be a boss and a co-laborer, and at the same time he was also our pastor, our strength. Our pastor, our strength. I thought the Bible said that I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. I thought our strength is supposed to be from the Lord. Oh, no, that's right. It was supposed to be our boss, Jack Hiles. Blasphemy. Let's continue. Our advisor, our counselor. Sure, he was Moses, Jeremiah, John the Baptist, Paul the Apostle, 
Billy Sunday, Bob Jones Sr., and John R. Rice all rolled into one. But he was also the guy next door. Again, logically reason this stuff out. If a man could be Moses, Jeremiah, uh, John the Baptist, Paul, um, John R. Rice, Bob Jones Sr., I forget if there were any others that he said. If a man could be all those things, how could he be comparable to the guy next door? And what idolatry to think that any man could hold that kind of a title, that kind of a position. But you see, the, the way the satanic cult works is once the cult leader dies, the cult of personality dies, it starts to crumble. And Hiles Anderson College is crumbling right now. They have videos. Check out their YouTube channel. They have videos pleading for money. And, uh, you know, we're really starting to hurt and everything else. They're falling apart. They're not going to survive. Good riddance. Continuing. I'll tell you the answer. Brother Hiles actually knew God on a personal basis. And part of God's personality rubbed off on Brother Hiles. Just like your best friend's personality rubs off on you. In that way, Brother Hiles was a lot like God, like he was in many ways. Since I believe that God can have a unique individual relationship with everyone all at the same time, it was not difficult for me to understand that to an extent Brother Hiles could have a unique individual relationship with thousands of people all at the same time. Brother Hiles was not God. But he knew God so well that he was enough like God that he could have a unique individual relationship with many, even thousands, all at the same time. You can take your stinking cult there, buddy that's still alive. You can take your stinking cult and go to hell with Hiles. How disgusting to make a, to make a statement about a man like that. Rotting corpse in the grave is what Jack Hiles is, and his soul is in hell. And this man is, oh, he's just so much like God. Nonsense. Oh, that's disgusting. Let's continue. I won't vex you much longer, don't worry. But more than was humanly possible, with some sort of a supernatural ability that rubbed off on him by being close to God, he was a good friend to thousands of us all at the same time. You heard it there again. That idiot just called Jack Hiles supernatural. Part of God rubbed off on him. But it doesn't stop there. There are many ways that Brother Hiles was like the Savior, but in this area he was the best. See, common everyday folks just loved hearing and being around Brother Hiles. You know, the Bible says that God hates Nicolaitans, the deeds of the Nicolaitans, those men that seek to rule over the laity, over the common man, keep him down. There were many ways that Brother Hiles was like the Savior. So now he's being compared to Jesus by uh, this Jeff Owens another loser from the Hiles cult. And these, these satanic heretics are all going out over America and preaching the gospel of no repentance, preaching a false gospel. Let's continue. There wasn't an arrogant bone in his body. Oh, don't get me wrong. He was a class act. He never let his ability go to his head. He was a genius, but he never talked above us. He was a genius, but he never talked down to us. Sure, sure, uh -huh, yeah. Listen to some of the guys preaching. He was an incredibly arrogant and incredible jerk. You know, there was a one pastor school thing where he stood up and he said, what are you all? And they're all like, everybody's supposed to answer, idiots, we're all idiots. There wasn't an arrogant bone in Hiles' body. Oh yeah, sure. Let's continue. 
Brother Hiles would go into the presence of the great God of the universe and bring things back to us common folks. He believed that the vehicle that best transported profundity was that of simplicity. Why? So that the common people could hear him gladly. Wow, isn't that something? One mediator between God and men, the man, Jack Hiles. He'd go into the presence of, of God and he'd bring back the supernatural and give it to us stupid laity. What is that? It's a Pope. Vicarious Philly D. Faithful substitute son of God. Faithful substitute God, whatever you want to make that into. But the point is, it is a title of the Pope. These people are Catholics. That's what they are. They're not independent fundamental Baptists. They're Catholic. Masquerading as Baptists. Masquerading as Bible-believing Christians. Let's finish up here. So what are we going to do with what he gave us? All of us have so much of Jack Hiles in us. It's in our personalities. It's in our professionalism. It's in our relationships that no one rightly has, can declare to be the exclusive source of what Brother Hiles was, what he had to give. Nobody can say I'm the defining person for Brother Hiles. We all are. And that's where we're going to close it. That's the final video clip of Jack Scap saying, Jack Hiles is in us. You see, that's the very, very definition of a cult. He controlled them. He told them what to say. He told them what to think. Now you can't discern the difference between Jack Hiles and his cult following. And that's really all that needs to be said. Jack Hiles, I don't believe for one second that the man was even saved. And if you have come through that system and you are bitter about it and you've watched this whole thing, let me just say, you've not experienced Jesus Christ yet. Because Jesus Christ would not have anything to do with that satanic nonsense right there. Jesus Christ, Jack Hiles did not know Jesus Christ. If he had, he would have been chastised. God would have stopped him from doing what he did. God would... I mean, folks, read the Bible and show me anywhere where anybody is working up into $70 million figures of real estate or even the equivalent of back then in the Bible times. It's not there. Show me where a Christian is doing that. And you say, well, what about King Solomon? King Solomon wasn't a Christian. And look what the money did to King Solomon. It ruined him. A thousand women to choose from, and he said, I can't even find one good among them. Jack Hiles was a very, very, very evil man. And it is time that we give him a proper memorial as Bible-believing Christians and give him the honorary title that he really, truly deserves of a satanic, lost minister of Satan and now citizen of hell. Because I don't believe the man was saved. And the movement that that man started has come out and destroyed the Bible-believing Baptist movement. He is the one who is responsible for easy believism. He is the one who is responsible for these cultic, huge mega buildings. And all the perversion that goes on, and all the evil, and all the wickedness. Jack Hiles has damned more people to hell in the 20th century than probably any other preacher. Jack Hiles was more evil than any Methodist, any Episcopalian, and I would say than most Catholic priests. He was a, a true minister of Satan. And let us remember him that way. That's going to be it for this study. And I thank you very much for watching. Don't get suckered in by these carnival preachers that change their voices, that modulate their voices, and draw you in. And I will tell you right now, if you listen to any of Jack Howells' sermons, there is a devil spirit there. And it will bewitch you. And you will think to yourself, wow, this guy's really good. But you better not forget the facts about that man's life. The facts that were presented in this video, these series of videos. You better not forget that.
just disgusting. I just really, I, I pray that if you know anybody out there, that you would present these these facts to them, these truths to them before it's too late. Because I'm, I'm afraid, brethren, there's going to be a lot of people that have gone through this false salvationism and they're going to end up in hell. Very, very tragic. So like I said, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. And uh, we will continue to expose the corruption, not only among the lost, definite lost like the Catholics, but among those that are professing saved. We will continue to expose these wicked charlatans like Jack Hiles. So that's it. Thank you.